Now they've started claiming a chunk of Manipur territory to form a separate administrative unit, which is totally unacceptable um, by all other district people of Manipur. And that has created a situation now. And as you see, armed Kupi militants, both in the Sioux and outside the Sioux, they, you know, uh, shut off ethnic cleansing uh, in Chalasanpur, Mori, and coming down to Torbun, up to Ho Chaukai, in the southern side, and in the distant western side, uh, particularly in uh, the distant Ketanwandi area, and in northern side, in Dolai Thavi, uh, and then uh, near, near Iko, and uh, when the village of Iko completely destroyed, burned down, and even uh, injuring children and women. So these rather uh, armed cookies attacking Metis, it's, uh, it was never thought of, but it has happened. And I said earlier that the cookies have committed a huge historical blunder by attacking the Metis. Metis have always wanted to live in peaceful coexistence with all the communities in Manipur. Now that trust is gone. And it is going to take a very long time to restore that trust and mutual love and respect for one another. We have always wanted to exist, respecting one another's distinctive identities and cultures. But that has been, I mean, compromised by the cookies, armed cookies attacking Metis. And about, you know, uh, the scenario is such that the emotion and sentiment are very high among the Metis population, particularly those affected, you know, the victims of this violence is very high. So even if uh, uh, the, the, the thing, uh, uh, some sort of a semblance of peace uh, is brought about at the political level, it's going to take a long time to, you know, heal the wounds uh, at the level of public. So I think some people have already commented that there is no runout in Manipur right now. And the security forces, particularly some rifles, they're facing, uh, you know, public complaints against them for siding with the cookie armed militants. And right now in Ketelmanbi, this uh, skirmishes, exchanges have been fired, taking place. And there is reports that some rifles is right, you know, protecting the cookies when cookies started fighting. And they're using twin motors and all, one public. Uh, when uh, this thing uh, made the wound is reported to have an injured and other casualties as well. So, uh, with all the security forces uh, airlifted to Manipur, about uh, 40,000, I don't see any sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, law and order this thing being controlled properly. Well, uh, <coughs> the Indian government uh, has not been able to take a principled stand only uh, the commitment that Manipur's integrity will be uh, uh, will not be disturbed. That's all. That's that's the only uh, commitment you get from the union government. Uh, what sort of uh, this thing, arrangements or solution they are thinking about is not yet in the public domain. Well, a lot of politics actually. Uh, politics uh, at different levels. In this thing, you know, the cookie uh, armed groups in the suspension of operations agreements. Uh, so, uh, the, the agreement was signed, the tripartite agreement was signed in 2008. Now, how many years? Well, almost 15 years into the agreement. And no forward this thing, movement of the agreement is seen right now. So, uh, the, all along the cookie uh, groups have been given a free hand. Uh, you no know, staying in the designated camps. They have uh, only a, couple, a few arms in the designated camps and moving around freely with uh, weapons, arms. Uh, what is the intention of the government of India? It's very, very obvious that uh, the, I would say, the nexus between uh, the armed cookies and the sound rifles. I don't think it is just at the level of uh, that some life was deployed here. There must be something. It reflects a policy of, you know, divide and rule in Manipur. And obviously, it seems that the security forces who, who have been airlifted into Manipur this time have been briefed, uh, protect the cookies, 
and suppress my taste. It seems so. Okay. Uh, well, uh, with the few growth uh, in the cookie, particularly, uh, well, I want to send a message to them that uh, they must love Manipur and they must uphold the spirit of coexistence with the people of Manipur and they must accept the reality, the fact that even if the their feet and cream across the border into Myanmar, they are they should be treated as foreigners. Of course, they may be their feet and cream, but a foreigner is a foreigner in a country. As so long as the international boundary is there and it should be respected, and from both sides, when they go from here to the other side of border, uh, must be they must be going there uh, with some documents. And if any Burmese cookie coming to Manipur, they must be treated as part. And the government, both this union government and the government, should do everything to protect this cross-border movement of people.